All right, so in this video, we're going to continue talking about line integrals. Um, but before we get into more detail with that, um, we're going to introduce the idea of a vector field. A vector field uh, is a function itself that assigns a vector to each point in its domain. Um, now, the notation that you'll see here for a vector field will have this capital letter F out in front, uh, and you'll have the vector notation as well. So capital letter F with the vector notation, we have vector field F equaling uh, P uh, of XYZ I plus Q XYZ J and R XYZ K. So this is in its uh, linear combination form. Um, which, honestly, if we continue to take this down a little bit further, I don't think it's going to be hard for you guys to see that that's also going to be represented uh, very loosely by P, Q, and R, uh, which I'll make mention of that many times throughout the next couple videos. Um, now, when it comes to vector fields, uh, the best advice I can give you to, to visualize it is to take a look at some examples. Uh, the book on page uh, 963 uh, has some good pictures in there. That's definitely not something that I can draw um, or would ask you to draw either. Uh, but to, to get a better idea of what it looks like, what a vector field can, can show us, um, take a look at page 963. Now, another very special type of vector field is a gradient field. And a gradient field is, in fact, uh, a vector field, specifically the gradient vector. Uh, and it might have been a while since we've talked about that as well, uh, but the gradient vector is just going to be partial uh, with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z. And when we talked about gradients a couple chapters ago, I do keep in mind, um, this is a vector, uh, and it's a vector pointing in the direction of maximal increase of f. All right, so it's always going to point in the direction of maximal increase. Uh, the magnitude of it uh, is actually the value of the directional derivative in that direction. Um, so the gradient field is uh, something that's going to come into play uh, as well uh, moving forward, but it is just a specific uh, type of vector field. All right, so <clears throat> when it comes to integrating a vector field now along a curve, <clears throat> this is going to be our setup. And I know the notation looks messy, but don't get bogged down with that because we are going to, in fact, simplify this down and make this pretty easy to, to work with. Um, so really what I want you to, to walk away with from this is uh, that if you take our vector valued function evaluated at, at our R of T dotted with R prime of T, that's going to essentially give us what we're looking for here. Now, what it is we're looking for, what it is we're finding, uh, is dependent upon the scenario. Uh, for example, many times this is called work. Work being uh, the work done in moving an object from one point to another point along curve C through the vector field. Okay, so that's one interpretation of this, again, given uh, a context. Uh, so work done in moving an object uh, from one point to another, a uh, long curve C through a vector field F. Uh, another possible uh, interpretation of this uh, would be circulation. Now that one obviously is not quite as, as powerful, it doesn't seem. Uh, work is relatable in any scenario, but circulation is one um, where it could be interpreted as circulation if the curve starts and ends at the same point. Um, we would say that's the circulation around the curve through the vector field. So just a couple things to keep in mind uh, as, as to what it is this is going to allow us uh, to actually do. Now, that being aside, uh, I am going to come over here and say uh, let f equal p, q, and r, just like we talked about in the last slide. And then if our r, let's say that our r of t is going to equal x, y, and z, just to keep it loose, then our r prime, which would be our dr, would actually end up being dx, dy, and dz. So now if I take f and I dot it with dr, now my f dot dr, uh, which I'll go ahead and even put the integral symbol there. This guy is this guy, f dot dr. If I dot these things, this is going to give us uh, p dx plus q dy plus r dz. 
Now, this looks a little bit strange, having one integral symbol, but having three differentials, the dx, the dy, and the dz. And that's where, again, the notation is really going to come into play. Uh, this is a line integral, so it's a different type of integral than you might have seen in Calc 1 or Calc 2. Um, but in fact, um, this part right here, the f dot dr, does give us the p dx plus q dy plus r dz with that single integral symbol out in front. And we'll define what the dx, dy, and dz are uh, as we get into some examples. Uh, but it's important to realize that uh, what we have here is, um, in terms of notation, it is correct, even though it feels a little bit uh, different. All right, so in the example we're going to take a look at, uh, we've got our vector field, uh, we've got our r, and we're going to be on the interval 0 to 1. Now, in the last uh, slide, I went ahead and I uh, related this guy right here to this guy right here. Um, as kind of a, a, a sidebar, these two things were equal uh, earlier in the, the video. And so I went ahead and I've equated all three of these things as the same so that we can keep track of things a little bit better. Uh, and so the big one that we're going to be focusing in on now would be these two. Um, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to evaluate my vector field at R of T. And so my F of R of T is going to be this guy right here, where that's my X, that's my Y, that's my Z. So if I plug this in, uh, I'll get a square root of T. I'll get a t cubed. Uh, that's when I plug both the x and the y right here. And then I'll get a negative t squared. Uh, so again, that was my uh, x, that was my y, that was my z, and I just plugged those in right there. Now, what that's created for me is my p, my q, and my r. So p, q, and r would be represented by those. Now for r prime of t, I'll just go ahead and take the derivative up here. And if you'll remember, that was defined as uh, dx, dy, dz. So for that, that's going to be a 2t, a 0, and a 1 over 2 root t. And that's our dx, that's our dy, and that's our dz. So now, um, when I dot them, when I dot them, as I talked about here, and as we showed in the last slide, that's just going to turn out to be this guy right here. So when we integrate now from 0 to 1, we're going to have our p dx, which is the square root of t. But notice how that dx is now 2t. It's now no longer represented as dx, but as a, a value, the derivative of x. Uh, then we'll have plus. We'll have our t cubed times our 0. So that's going to be our q dy. And then finally, plus the r value, which is negative t squared, uh, dz, which is 1 over 2 root 2. And so that would be now your setup uh, in terms of uh, what we have up here in blue and how it all is related. Um, so as you can see, a lot of this is just notation. Um, actually coming up with this stuff is very easy. Actually integrating this is very easy. We're down to a single integral, uh, but it's really just understanding the notation. And I find it best that if you're going to start a problem like this, it's not a bad idea to write out this stuff. Uh, it shows you exactly what you need, uh, and then once you find it, it's just a matter of constructing it.